Hello and welcome to Edinburgh Watch Company. My name is Jonathan and today is the first of a, hopefully a, a range of videos that we're going to be doing where we talk about our passion for watches, cars and most importantly great people. Before we get going we'll just do a quick check. Do we have vision? Do we have sound? Cameraman, that's a yes, we can go. Great, okay, so we are here this afternoon in the most beautiful surroundings of Western Mercedes, um, and we're shooting this video with two fantastic guests. May I introduce you to Damien from The Car Guys. Hello. Damien, hello, lovely, welcome to see you. And Ricky. Not seen you in a while. From Scottish Watches, it has been, it has been a while. So, Damien and Ricky are one half of the duo of two fantastic channels. The Car Guys TV and Scottish Watches. Damien, two years ago, you and Jason got together to talk about cars, your passion. Yeah, not in the biblical sense, I no. should point out. Uh, let's talk about that in a second. First of all, before we go, we've got to do the wrist check, haven't we? Yep. Yeah. So let's start off with you. When I picked you off off that flight this morning, even arrived on time, that's pretty good, isn't it? You know, you were right there on the button, couldn't take my eyes off it. What are you wearing today? So I've got the uh, newly arrived, so only arrived last month. This is the uh, Patek Philippe uh, Travel Time, the Aquanaut, which is the 5164A. So this is, uh, this is the one I've been waiting for for a while and it finally came in a month earlier than expected. So it's, it's a really great everyday watch with also just a little bit of class. We had a lovely chat in the car about some of your other Pateks. I want to come back to you on that one too. But first of all, all in black here, yes. cool as it comes, like the Dark Rider. What are you wearing, Ricky? Uh, I have got the Ducati Black Shield Fast Rider, which is ceramic, ETA movement. I did for a couple of years, and I've got a couple of black ceramic watches. It's good to rotate them every so often, because we're coming to something to do with motorsport today, I thought that would do. Yep, so you're a keen biker, aren't you? What is yes. it? What are you riding just now? Uh, Suzuki GSX R750 at the moment. Fantastic. No, it's a really, really cool watch. And I am wearing a Rolex Yachtmaster, um, which is something new for me to wear, as you'll Where's know. Where's your Daytona? I know, the Daytona, I, I've actually, I don't know how I've managed to take it off, but I'm very lucky. Uh, I wear the Daytona ceramic, and I have had it on my wrist for a year. It barely comes off. But this lovely little watch came in the other day, a 2013 Rolex Yachtmaster in stainless steel with a platinum bezel. And I thought, with this gorgeous blue dial, mm -hmm. we've got to put it on a rubber beach strap. And I know it's not official Rolex, but it feels absolutely great and, yeah. and loses all the weight. So yeah, that's what I'm wearing just now. So great, what a fantastic collection of watches. But we have got, gosh, almost 24 watches here to have a look at this afternoon. I don't think we'll get through the chance to have a look at them all, but certainly we'd love to hear some of your views on some of these watches. Mm. So Damien, the car guys. Yeah. Um, two years ago you started, now for someone to start a business like that with you and Jason doing that, you must love cars. Where did this all come from? Well really, I mean, I, I sold my previous business and I didn't have much to do. So I was like, well, what, what can I do to stop my brain from turning to mush? Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I'll learn video editing and filming and that. And I had a car collection. So I thought, well, that's going to be what I'll start with. So I'll use that, learn all the skills, and we might as well put it onto YouTube. And Jason and I, we've got a mutual love of the film, The Cannonball Run. Uh, so we're always quoting that and we love it. And we met up about 10 years ago on a road trip and really just bonded over the whole car thing, the whole car scene. So we sort of thought, well, it'd be a good idea. Maybe let's, let's try a YouTube channel. There's two of us. So you've got that natural banter that you get between two fairly opinionated old Gets, which is what we are so you get a little bit of um, uh, you know we're talking a lot about the cars themselves were obviously quite experienced because we're older we know about the cars and it was really an excuse to drive all the cars that we didn't get to drive from the 90s onwards so we get to drive our dream cars and film it at the same time and really the vibe that we're going for is we're very much appealing to older guys uh, the sort of people that we are and we're sort of trying to recapture some of that sort of older top gear type vibe with the fact that there's that camaraderie between the hosts so with the two of us we get that jason's got his views he's from essex he's all about the sort of performance fords and all that sort of stuff uh, and the white stilettos and the diamond white and i'm more about the supercars and the italian stuff so together we've got two interesting views on all the cars and uh, and we just have a lot of fun doing it 
So you talk about a few words there, two opinionated old gits that got together. There's yep. a real synergy going on here because we have two guys in the world of publishing. So you sold your publishing business yep. a few years ago. Ricky, you come from a world of publishing as well, and you're one bit. duo of the two old gits that got together. <laughs> I'm the young git. How, how, how did that actually start? How did you and uh, how did you and Rick meet? Uh, Lonely Hearts column in the sun, <laughs> I think it was. No, it was a year ago we met up unofficially at a Red Bar event, mm -hmm. uh, and then we, we get invited to a store launch or a relaunch in Glasgow. And as I've mentioned before in our podcast, walked into the room and the loudest voice in the room was Rick. It was, me. It was that <laughs> voice there and I just can't get that noise out of my head every single night when I go to sleep. That's what terrifies me. But uh, yeah, we had an idea a year ago, just, just over a year, year ago now we launched the website and started working on it, officially launched it in January 2019. Started a podcast, decided let's do this maybe twice a week because hey, who needs sleep? Uh, nearly 100 episodes later, here we are. Uh, met yourself obviously nearly a year ago as well and we've all been getting on great since waiting for the big fallout but it hasn't happened yet so and we have we, we've, we've sort of got a bit of a stig haven't we in the world of Scottish watches we've got the we camera do. shy Rick I mean do you think you'll come out soon at some point uh, in what way well all oh, right on camera perhaps you never know <laughs> uh, but we've been talking about it for a while and maybe I think he likes the fact there's this mysteriousness he's Charlie from Charlie's Angels yes <laughs> or he's the stig like you say but <laughs> Well, well, we and that cough in the background there, I mean, it's his trademark. <coughs> trademark it's trademarked, I mean, yeah. really. The, well, the, the I mean, our, in the video that you know we, we, we shot together, I mean, we, yeah. we, we, we've got to see the back of his head. So he's got, he's, got, he's got more than you and I, haven't he? A lot of people decided they were going yeah. to try and grab frames out the video to see yeah. what it looked like. Yes. And reflections off the glasses oh. as well. Yes, well, like the the, the watchfinder chap, he's been spotted on the, uh, the, the reflection. The bezel on an oyster perpetual, I think yeah. it was. But no, Rick. It's coming out party, maybe maybe in our one year anniversary of the podcast, who knows, it may not be. Right. But, uh, we'll I'm, I'm a bit starstruck as well, because obviously I listen to the Scottish Watches podcast, so this is like this is like dreamland stuff for me, <laughs> actually putting putting the faces to the side. So if yeah, you close your eyes? Yeah, it's pretty uncanny. It, it, there you go, perfect. <laughs> so we met, I guess it was through YouTube really, wasn't it? Because mm -hmm. I'd been watching your channel and, and there's, I guess there's, I think with there are so many people around the world now watching YouTube like television mm -hmm. in a way. Uh, and I think with smart TVs, etc., just now, it's just fantastic to watch. And, and there's lots of choice and there's such a, a difference to what Shmi's doing and JWW is doing and what you're doing. And I think it's each to their own for, by means of the audience. But I think you're, there's a similarity again in what you're both doing because you're not corporate. You're doing what you love. You're not too serious about it, and and you kind of you tell it how it is, which yeah. I think is a really nice thing. It's as good that we're not having to wear a, a corporate hat that wants us to say that. You just and I think that's what really allows your viewers to, to associate with you. And you're I mean you're driving their dream and aspirational cars, but where, where did it all start? I mean by means of your car collection, what was your first car? The first sort of proper supercar was a 355 Spider, so that was like the, my dream car at the time. So 2003 I bought that, I've still got it actually, mm -hmm. um, but that was the kind of genesis of the supercars. And, and as, as with cars, as with watches, as with all sorts of, of bonkers collections, you start with the one and you think that's the only one you're going to have and maybe you might be able to get two, but then you get two and then you, breathe, you, you, know, you sneeze and you get five and before you know it you've got 15 cars and, uh, and many, many more more watches so wow. I think men inherently are fierce collectors we've got this hoarding collecting gene that we apply to all sorts of things and definitely for me it started out as cars and then a couple of years ago I sort of caught the watch sort of bug and virus and now watches is, is almost a bigger thing for me than cars um, so that's really where it started mm -hmm. and, uh, and you know I started the YouTube with the cars because I had the cars and I thought it would be a good, good place to start but for watches I think that will be the next thing that we do. And you have actually, although you haven't really pushed it yet, you've got the Watch Guys TV as well yeah. so that's something that you're going to be doing in, in time to come. Yeah. Now I'm conscious that you're running a car channel and you've got 40,000 people watching you doing that. 
Edinburgh Watch Company channel um, is, is slightly different. The videos that I've done for the last few years have predominantly been there to, to help viewers looking at these watches. And a lot of it's around trust as well, because you know when someone's thinking about spending five, ten thousand pounds on a watch and they and they see this company, it's the case of well, are they genuine and the watch is genuine. And these watches watch reviews have been very powerful for me to actually do something like that. So again, I think seeing the angle that you put on it would be quite interesting. However, most of the people watching this today will be watch people, so I think it's time that we maybe pick a watch out of this wonderful collection. Ricky, would you like to start? Because I know you've asked Damien to bring up some watches. I have. Right, okay, well we're going to go for probably the most unique piece, although it's not a unique piece, it's one of a limited run, and that will be the Quartz Rolex. Oh. If you want to talk about that one. There you go, yeah, so this is, I haven't got that many sort of vintage watches you know a lot of people move into vintage and classic and they get sort of classic daytonas and things like that and i've shied away from that a little bit because they scare me more than the modern stuff but one of the ones i do have is the beta 21. now this is a, a solid gold rolex which is a quartz movement it's the only quartz movement they've ever done it's the only limited edition rolex that's ever really been produced so they believe that there's a thousand of these produced and it was created in the early 70s um, because at that point you had the quartz crisis and you had the whole worrying feel from the from the Swiss companies that quartz was the future and they better get on board so Rolex partnered with a few of the other major watch companies to develop a quartz movement and this is the result and it's it's the only one they've ever done it's got a lovely bark texture to oh, yeah. the gold which uh, is a bit of an acquired taste um, but it is it is a sort of real unique piece and I think you know if you're going for that sort of Don Johnson Wolf of Wall Street <laughs> look then uh, you know you can't really find anything better than that so that's the weekend look is it it can be the weekend look. yes yes so so where does, you this, does this predate the oyster quartz don't know well, yeah, I think it must do actually right. but um, yeah so you where did you know pick that one up from then that one I had a, uh, a watch buying session in London and I actually think I bought it on uh, Old Bond Street, I think. I think right. I got it from there. I like that watch buying session London. <laughs> it kind <laughs> of yeah. sort of and, and Rick segues into the watch buying session Edinburgh. I mean, yeah. surely we could better that. Are. Thank you. <laughs> I think, I think I think I was on the lookout for one of those. I, again, sometimes I get it in my head that I've got to get something. Mm -hmm. A lot of the watches that we have here are as a result of this mania of this real desire to get something. And for some reason, I was going through that phase, and and I had to get that. And I think on the same trip, I'm pretty sure I got my. This will interest Rick actually. I got my first and only Panerai. I think on the same trip as I as I bought that. <laughs> That's a Panerai. So which one have you got? Panerai have you got? It was a it was a Luminor, but it's the London edition. So right. it's the one that they did the boutique only for the to celebrate the fact that the London boutique mm. was was opened or had been going for a certain period of time. So it's actually got a sort of etched London scene on the back of the case, mm -hmm. which is which is quite cool. This is absolutely gorgeous. It really is, isn't it? We don't see many of the but I sometimes see some of the 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 bark effect on the on the day dates mm -hmm. uh, that that come through. But that one that is actually quite gorgeous. Yeah, if you want bling. That's your Is thing. that the one? Yep. That's the one. So like the jacket rolled up a little bit, shirt, Always. And the shoes, then caught, yep, obviously the business. Yep. Ricky, how, how about something for you? I just oh, you did one, didn't you? I did. Yeah. If you're to, <laughs> you have to pick Get the wrong way around. That's an age thing, 55 years old. David. Well, for me, if I'm going to go through this box, then the one that obviously my eye turns towards is Thought this that. little number. And why is that? Because men have a thing about blue and orange, okay? This is a thing we have, blue and yellow as well, but blue and orange is even more powerful. Whether it's a Le Mans thing, you know, some kind of motorsport, but my eye is drawn to, to this little beauty. Tell us a little bit about this one, Jonathan. Thank you. Is it's this an Iron Brew commemorative edition? It is, absolutely, <laughs> yep, it is. Um, I don't know whether Michael Phelps, do you think that's what Michael Phelps maybe drank Iron Brew then to get his 28 Olympic medals? Perhaps. We do have a photograph. We do. We do. We do indeed. This is this particular watch we've got is the Amiga Seamaster Planetation. Uh, it's one of 280 in the world, and it was made by Amiga to commemorate uh, the Olympian champion Michael Phelps, uh, who I think 25 of his medals were gold medals, and it's beautiful. It's based upon the 45mm um, um, chronograph. 
Um, but it's got some really cool features. The, the dial, while well, the, the camera, we'll get some really close-up footage of it later on, looks white. It's actually a ceramic white, mm. and it really pops, you know, when the I'm light catches that. it. Yeah, it's really, it. really cool. I've actually got this watch in stock on a bracelet as well, which is really nice, but it's quite chunky. But I think when you actually have it on this on this particular strap, it, yeah. it's quite cool. So it features all the usual stuff that the Coaxio one does, but it's such a limited watch. And I think just the little accents of the blue here uh, really work. But you talked about your blue and yellow one. So after we met, I guess, through YouTube, yep. uh, we got chatting. And um, I just missed you on one of your Scottish trips because you came up in the, was it the 458 Speciale you were yep. up in? Yep, Speciale. You came up, I think we were hoping to meet there. But listen, I'm so glad you've come up here. And you very kindly bought the most beautiful yes. Audemars PK from me, didn't I you? I bought this. I thought Ooh. the this is the uh, offshore diver. So it's the, the AP and again, blue and yellow mm -hmm. this was the uh, out of this range and bear in mind you can buy a, a gazillion different variations of the sort of you know the whole royal oak and the offshore i quite like the safari one as well that's mm -hmm. a white face but this one was the one that always i was always interested in um, wasn't interested in the sort of rose gold or the silvers or whatever and uh, and just it's just total i don't know luck or a serendipity that this is the one that i wanted I was trying to get in touch and to buy something from you because obviously I bought into the whole Edinburgh watch company ethos. And then you had this suddenly available. So if you remember, I just messaged you immediately and I said, uh, yeah, you've got this, tell me about it. And then you were like, well, yeah, okay, it's quite nice, very good. It's, you know, one owner, very careful, complete mint condition. And uh, and you said, what do you think? And I think it took me about 10 minutes. You are a very quick decision maker. <laughs> yeah. I, will, I, I will give you that. You don't, you're humming the whore. But again, I think that's probably yeah. on that, you know, with the cars yeah. that you've bought, would you, you, thank you, which you, I'll let you have a wee look at yeah. that, yeah. that, which you, you've built up, um, the cars you've bought. You've often got to be pretty quick on the ball when they, when these sort of very special cars that have come up. You've got to be pretty quick on the ball to get them, haven't you? Yeah, you've got you've got to be a bit ballsy and a bit stupid, and and sometimes you you just got to go for it. And one of the things I've learned is that very often, if you snooze, you lose. If you pause, it it goes, and you'll always regret it. So so part of the reason why I've got so many watches, so many cars, and so many other things is, is I'm very impetuous like that. Yeah. And uh, and it even ties in with um, when I, I was I, the Scottish watches guys interviewed um, Nick from from Bremont oh, uh, yes. on the podcast, and suddenly you know I really bought into that, and it reminded me there was a particular tornado red barrel Martin Baker. Bremont that I'd been stalking and I'd been umming and ahhing for a few weeks and it was always there and I thought well no one else is going to buy it uh, and then it and then it went and as soon as it went I wanted it more than anything and I just completely regretted it so you know it's, it's experiences like that sometimes when you see something you just have to go for it and worry about how you're going to pay for it or worry about what you're going to do with it later and, uh, and with that one I wasn't going to let that baby go. No, that was, a, that was a lovely one. But of course, you had some time with Bremont recently, didn't you? Yes, uh, we went over and met them in Edinburgh, and it was an interesting night. Met the co-founder, yep. obviously did the interview that you heard, yep. and it was good hearing the history, the passion. Some of the stories weren't so good, obviously, the, the father passing away, uh, naming of the, the company after. Yep. Uh, what the was farmer. it? They said a discretionary landing? Yes. Yes. Something like that, yes. which, like which that. meant they crashed. Uh, <laughs> so it was, it was good hearing that, and the watches that they bring out having little pieces of history and little pieces of unique things like the right flyer uh, the hurricane even the martin baker ejector seats and all mm. the rest of it there's always a little story that goes with it they don't just release lots of special editions limited editions where it's it's partially attracted to something it's always got a little bit of a foot in history somewhere uh, and that's why they're, they're doing really well in sort of reinvigorating the the uk watch industry so yeah it's nice meeting them we talked earlier about so the synergy or, or, and, and your background in publishing mm -hmm. before Scottish Watches, I know you've got your own business now, but mm -hmm. before you're involved in Scottish Watches, you're involved in the, the performance publishing business. Kind of a. Yeah. Kind of a. I've done a lot of different things, DJing, uh, photography, video, you know, this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I worked, I get headhunted back in the early 2000s by Guardian Media Group, who wanted to do a performance car magazine because the Fast and Furious films had come out and they've been massively popular and they wanted to capitalise on it. It was around about the time where Max Power, Redline, Fast Car, Roll, publishing figures were going through the roof uh, and they basically got a hold of me because I was running a car website, the first performance modified car website in Scotland, asked if we wanted me and the guy I was doing it with, do you want to do a, a magazine? And 
being in early 20s and someone says, do you want to make a car magazine? You'd be like, yep, let's do that. So I went all over the place. I uh, used to go to all the events down in like Donny, Max Power Live, up in Scotland, we've got Knock Hill, Creole. So yeah, got into that. Uh, and then unfortunately publishing kind of started to tail off. Mid 2000s, it went a little bit internet, especially with the younger guys who were into modified cars, you know. Back then it was like Saxos, um, the Japanese scene was coming in a little bit, Skylines were coming over, it was all Impresses and Evos. Uh, I myself had an MR2 Turbo, tarted it right up, uh, played around with the turbos on it, aftermarket ECUs, uh, snakehead downpipes, nitrous oxide injection, all kinds of Talking cool stuff. Talking of that car, you've got something like that. Not Jason not got something yeah. sort of Japanese-y? Well, like I, I actually had an MR2 yeah. back in the day as well, mm -hmm. just the normal one, because mm -hmm. like turbos, you had to import them because they yes. weren't like native. And then uh, about three months ago, I rescued one, like a barn find one that oh, right. was just like rotting and, and sort of did it up and, uh, and, and went out and did a few videos with it. But Is yeah. that the red one? No, it's blue. Blue one? Yeah, it's like right. bright bright blue. Um, what, but like that sort of shade? Is no, it? no, a little bit different to that. Ah, okay, yeah. we, can, we, can, we, can, we can do something with that. <laughs> I know when we talk, going back to Scottish watches, mm -hmm. um, you, I remember you told this lovely story about you kind of really what got you into it was you kind of bought a watch and then it went wrong. Yeah. What, tell us a little bit more about that. How did that happen? I got to that age in life where you think, we, right, I've got the, the house, I've got the car, what does a man get next? And I'd never really worn a watch and I'd bought a, a kind of Fitbit clone and I was like, that's, that's a bit crap. I need something better. And my dad had always spoken about Rolex, never had one, never could never afford one, but he'd seen James Bond, he'd <laughs> seen this, he'd seen that, and I would sit with him and watch and it's like Rolex, that's the watch to get, and it always stuck with me. My dad unfortunately passed away 20 years ago and I thought, right, okay, I'll do something, a little bit of a memory. Uh, so I went in and I picked up a Rolex GMT Master, one of the original ones, 1999 bought it, got it home, and it, was, it wasn't it was accurate. It was losing just about a minute a day or so, or it was it was something like that. It was either too fast or it was too slow, and I thought, surely this must be better. Went on the internet, did a bit of research, Googling, is this right? No, it should be running like within about five seconds a day for something that's that age, and uh, just started reading, you know, can, can I fix it myself? Is there something mm -hmm. I can do? Found forums, just like with cars. You know, you start reading all the information on it, and I was like, there's more to this than just buy it, stick it in the wrist, forget about it. And because I'm mechanically minded, mm -hmm. having tinkered with cars, I thought, right, well, that's how it works. So it's based on like hundreds and hundreds of year old technology, and it's been modernized. And then I realized this has to go back. It's not right, I've paid a lot of money for it, I'm not happy. So I took it back, and like you were saying about your videos online, I'd been watching people's videos, and there was a company down south, David Callio runs, and he had done lots of videos quite similar to the way you do them and I had listened to what he said, learned, built up a bit of a rapport watching his videos and I got in touch with him so I returned the faulty watch and I bought a newer one from him, it was my first online purchase and I felt comfortable buying because I'd seen the videos, seen the history, seen the watches he'd sold to other customers just like yourself uh, and I was quite happy with my purchase so I got rid of the 1999 GMT1 and bought a 2012 GMT2, the LN edition but that only lasted a couple of months and then I got rid of that and uh, <laughs> got a Batman. Batman. <laughs> because yeah. when I was phoning around looking for the LN edition, I'd phoned a couple of ADs in Scotland and they're all like, oh, 12 months waiting list for the Batman. Because I'd asked about it, you know, what's, what's the chances? Yeah. No chance. Somebody had accidentally put my name on a list. So within three months, I get the phone call, your Batman's here, do you want to come and pick it up? Amazing. Panicked. Because like, I didn't have <laughs> spare money just sitting in a bank account. So I kind of pulled things together, ditched everything that afternoon straight down to the AD, picked up my first yeah. brand new Rolex and that, that was an experience. It was like when I bought that's, my first performance car. Yeah. Well, I guess that's been, I know you're not, in fact, you're very good actually, because you, you've got, you don't sell your watches really, do you? You, no, you keep them all. In fact, terrible. we're out in the car this morning and um, I, I was thinking, how many watches have I got in stock? <laughs> You've got more than I have. <laughs> you know, this should be Damien Limited, you know? I think you've got, how many have you got just now? 85. 85. Fantastic. Brilliant yeah. collection. Right, on the topic of watches, I've actually been eyeing up something here. Can you drag that out for me? It's your Amiga 50th anniversary. Oh, because yes. that really is um, it's too valuable for me to drop between there and here. So yeah, fresh out of the box. Um, so again, this is another one of my obsessions. There you go. So I, I saw this actually, I did see it on Houdinki when they, when they sort of first announced it and saw those incredible crystal clear photos. And I, and I sort of, I really wanted one and I, and I, I dealt with my 
dealer down south here and I said, could you get me one? And I, you know, I, I'd got a good profile of Rolex um, with, um, is it is Langs or Langs? Langs, yeah. Langs. Mm -hmm. So I've got a good, um, a good relationship on the Rolex side with Langs and I said, could you get me one of these watches? And they sort of looked into it and actually the only, one, the only shops that were getting that watch was Glasgow and Edinburgh. So they were the only ones out of the group that were that were getting them. So I said, well, you know, any chance you could get me one of those? And they said, well, uh, we're only getting three uh, ever. And if if there aren't orders for more than three in Edinburgh and Glasgow, then you can you can have you can have one. So I sat there waiting, and we phoned Edinburgh, and Edinburgh they didn't have any orders for it at all. So I was like, yes. So I'm like, what are the chances of three people in Glasgow, you know, all wanting one of those ones? I thought pretty slim. I'm definitely going to get it. But as it turned out, they actually only, only got one. So so someone in Glasgow got the got that that one, and I I didn't didn't get it. I missed out. So I was a bit annoyed about that, but fortunately, um, a watch guy, a sort of dealer that I uh, that I know, does a lot of work on Instagram. He managed to find one, and as soon as he did, I, I managed to secure it from him. But it was wow. quite funny because it was from a collector who'd been offered that watch, so a big sort of Amiga collector, and they he actually vetted me to you know kind of like interviewed me to find out what my intentions were because if I had got it from him and then flipped it it might have affected his relationship so I r assured him that I was not that sort of guy and um, and bought it the next day well we have a, a friend in the the watch community here in Scotland who's also a friend well true an acquaintance true yeah now Floatlight he's got one of these hasn't he we did Scottish watches did a video with him yeah. when he picked it up all the hullabaloo with the, the NASA moon landings and stuff mm. back in June, July time. He got one of these guys mm -hmm. and came over and we spent a day filming it. And he was telling us a story and that's what I like. Instead of when you go and you speak to some people, some ADs, some people that aren't into watches, yeah. they can tell you the specs and they can rhyme off the list. But when you sit down with an enthusiast who says, this is the reason I got this, uh, you know, it was great. So if you've not checked that video, you should. Oh, it's a good one. Cool. Mm. It's absolutely Moonshine. beautiful. Absolutely yeah. beautiful watch. So I guess in speaking of Omega here, you were with Rick at the launch. Uh, yes. Last, was it the Omega? That's the new boutique in Glasgow, wasn't it? Yes. How was that? They, it was really good. Mm -hmm. uh, they kind of get kicked out of the last place they were in, which at the time they felt a bit sort of hard done by, but it's worked out in their favour because this new boutique they've got, it's a new concept with Omega. And I believe this is the first one in the world right. using this livery and design concept. Uh, it's really good. Right. Oh, look what the out. hell is going oh, on look here? Out. Look, the children are in the room. <sighs> uh, what have we got here? Archie Luxury Airways. Can, can you read? I can read. I, I can read you. his writing. Is, he read, is it in Scottish or is it? Is it in Scotch? Yeah. <laughs> in Scotch. <laughs> um, can you translate it for Damien then? Yeah. What watch strap did you wear to Omega? Right, okay. Uh, that needs some explanation. So, yeah, it was a petite launch yesterday. Get that. Yeah, I got oh, right through perfect. the hole. There we go, expert. So <laughs> went to the launch last night of the, the boutique and yeah. uh, I knew there was a lot of big wigs and stuff. I'd heard the rumours that the, the top brass were coming from down south and even from Switzerland. And I've got an Apollo 8 Speedmaster. I've seen it. Beautiful yeah, and it's, watch. it's really nice. But yeah. the strap it comes on is okay. I yeah. like to accessorise and whatnot. And Omega don't make a really nice rubber strap for it because it's an odd size and it's a dark side of the moon. So it's 21 mil, it's not 20 or 22. So I found on eBay as you do if you've got a nice car you can buy car mats on ebay and it'll say ford or Vauxhall. well this strap it was a legit enough strap but it says omega on it but it's not made by omega so one of our friends who works for omega said do not wear that aftermarket strap do not wear it just don't so obviously we did because you followed yeah yeah, yeah so i went yeah. the exact opposite direction yeah. like herding cats so i turned up and not only did i wear it i made a beeline for the managing director of omega uk and got a wrist shot with him amazing so there's a photo of me the md i think his name's andre uh, doing a double wrist shot and he's like, hey, look at that. So, happy days. Wow. So lovely, it is a lovely watch that, isn't it? it but is. hey, look, listen, we're all wearing, I mean, I'm wearing rubber B here, you're yeah. wearing that. I actually saw something, I don't know if you saw that recently on, um, on the net. There's this company in America that have been selling customized Rolexes. Yeah. And there's all sorts of chat about what's a fake watch, what's a real watch. So if you put a rubber bead strap on a real watch, is that then a fake watch? It's really quite interesting, isn't it? And that's going to go to court actually, but I don't know how well they'll they'll fight that one out. But I think uh, there's there's more to it that yeah. we don't really know. There's rumors that they were using aftermarket cases. 
Right. Uh, they had reapplied the logos and things themselves, mm -hmm. so they were a bit shirty about that. But then it draws, like, with cars. Mm -hmm. If I was to go to a Porsche event, a Ferrari event, and had a, a car painted in a non-standard colour, would they get shirty? It was a couple of years ago, Ferrari went mental at Dead Mouse mm -hmm. because he had changed his Ferrari into, I think it's Nyan Cat, and they went bonkers because he took that in the gumball. Uh, and they basically sent a cease and desist, put it back the way it was. Wow. So, so who knows how it will go. So that, the Amiga event was just one of the things you've gone to. Now yeah. I know you spotted something in this case earlier on, which I think you'd seen. Was it at Baal, was it? Was it the oh, Tag Heuer? You was it the, no, it was the, uh, earlier this year I went to the Geneva Motor Show. Ah, right. And because it was Tag's 50th anniversary, as everybody seems to be having 50th anniversaries <laughs> this year, they had the Monaco through the ages. Yes. And you actually had a really nice uh, I don't know the name of it. It was a red dial. Yes, I did. I'm not sure which version it was, but yeah, that was actually that stunning. Was, um, 1980. 1980. Thank you. We've got the computer <laughs> in the back there. Yes. Um, yeah, one of 169 in the world. Yeah, that was incredible. And that watch lasted a whole day, <laughs> and, and it's now in Vietnam. Oh, and nice. really, it was. Ab it just popped that dial, didn't it? But yeah, incredible. this is. Um, and you've got another one here today, have, so I'm going to yeah, look at this. This is the last of them. Um, this is 20, 2009 to 2019. So they're all based upon the Calibre 11 movement mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, on it. But what I think is really nice about that is it's like a, it's like a sandblasted yeah. finish on the case, isn't it? Yeah, it's very interesting. It's quite actually. cool, isn't it? There's just no other watch that's got that shape to it. Yeah. It's instantly recognizable. And of course it's the left-hander as well, so it's very Steve McQueen. Have you had a Monaco in your collection, Damien? No, I've never really fancied them. Jason's got one. Uh -huh. He's got the sort of standard blackface one, and yep. I think he secretly hankers for the golf one, the one with the golf stripes uh, on it. Mm. But for me, it's never done it. The one that goes for me is the, the Silverstone. So the her Silverstone ones are the ones, the red face one and the blue face one of that I actually I was adore. Don't leave me I was hanging. at Goodwood when they launched that watch. Really? Yeah. Don't leave me hanging, Jonathan. <laughs> it's lovely, isn't it? It's, yes. um, it's prefer really, the red, but that is gorgeous a, as well. It's a really nice piece. It's, yeah. really, it's really pretty cool. So, Damien, back to your watches, um, the Pateks, etc. You've built up, say, an incredible collection of watches there, um, and for what we can see here, quite a diverse collection as well. Yeah. I thought you'd have spotted the Doxer in there actually earlier on because you love these dive watches, don't you? You and the Ricks are like the. I saw it, but there's just so many nice pieces in there. Yeah. We'd, we'd be here for another 20 hours. <laughs> it's hard hours. to choose. So what have you got coming? Well, for me, um, I've, got, I've got some Rolex on the way, but mm -hmm. like everyone, I'm on the waiting list and, and just like hoping they're going to arrive. So, you know, the big ones, Blueface Sky Dweller, I'm on the list for that, waiting for that. But the one I really want is the solid gold Daytona with the green face. So I've been on the list for a long time for that and, uh, and I'm hoping, hoping my numbers come up and, and I get one of those. Um, and uh, on the Patek side, there's, there's a couple that I'm waiting for. One very, very special one, which I'm going to hope is going to come in on my, on my 50th year. I'm trying to time it to come in for my 50th birthday and, and that will be my present to myself, that sort of ultimate grail watch. And what's the model number for those who love their Patek? That's a Patek again. Yes, yeah, so that's a Patek. Yeah. That's a fifty-two seventy-one. Right. So, so it's a it's a proper grand calculator, mm -hmm. grand complication black face uh, with baguette diamonds on it. But it's it sounds more gaudy than it is. It's actually quite subtle, and it's got a courier font on it as well, which uh, looks absolutely sensational. And I'm kind of hoping I might get one of the new Calatravas, the the calendar ones that they just launched at Basel World. I'm, I'm sort of hoping I'm going to get one of those. But um, but you never know. You know, as good as you as good as your relationship is. Some you get, some you don't, so, um, you know. When we, you weren't terrifying me in that incredibly quick Mercedes this morning, mm. we also got talking about something very, very special. There seems to be a real theme just now around salmon pink mm -hmm. on some of these uber luxurious watches. AP have just brought it out in the Royal Oak that's making absolute fortunes. And I was with a chum of mine down south uh, a couple of weeks ago and we had supper together and he was wearing this most beautiful AP again with a salmon dial on a leather strap and you've got that one too. Now that's the platinum one, isn't it? That's really... Yeah, pla that's... So platinum, sorry, it's Patek Philippe, I was saying, isn't it? Yeah. That's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, that's the that's the 5270P. Mm -hmm. So um, what's lovely about that is the combination of the sort of chocolate brown sort of mm -hmm. alligator strap with the salmon dial. Salmon dial is quite a historic Patek color 
and they brought it back for this for this grand complication and it is such a beautiful watch you know the mechanism inside and just the sheer look when you as you move it in the light it goes from sort of salmon pink to almost almost copper uh, under certain lights and it, it's a it's a fantastic watch and again i mean I, I expect it to to have to wait you know many many years to get one of those but uh, but it actually turned up this year i think we talked about it's all about relationships isn't it yep. i mean that's how you're getting these watches you're not flipping them you're keeping them you're enjoying them and i guess that's also what's allowed you to get the, some of the most beautiful ferraris you've been getting because i think if i remember seeing in one of your videos you had a four five eight in a sort of slightly off red color which you sort of bought which helped you get on the list that got you was it the Aperta or was it the yeah, that one? Have you got was it the Pisa? Pisa was it the one? That you, yeah, the one you're thinking of. So yeah. that, that was a four eight eight, which yep. helped me get a Pista. Yeah, that hasn't arrived yet, but ah. in, but in theory, it will help me get it when it does arrive. And also, I managed to because of the collection. Ferrari is very similar to, to Rolex in in that way. In that, you, if you own the right models and you buy into the brand and you attend the events and you know you've, you've got the right mix, there's this magical calculation that says if it adds up to the right number you may have this new special model and so no one is guaranteed about getting everything uh, even the biggest collectors sometimes miss out on them but if you've got the right collection and the right time then then the stars can align so with me I had a selection of different types of Ferraris and then I bought a brand new Ferrari 458 Italia and that was the final combination that then allowed them to offer me the 458 Speciale Aperta which is one of 490 a stunning stunning car very very collectible and the last naturally aspirated v8 ferrari that, that they'll ever make so you know i managed to get one of those but i, I don't get everything and uh, and sometimes it's it's luck sometimes you know you're in the right place and sometimes you've got the right cars um some of them i've, I've i have managed to get many many times i haven't but but i'm still a massive supporter of the brand and porsche is very similar as well there's loads of porsches yeah. that i just have not got i love the brand and of course you're you love your you've got the, the cayman yeah. s you've got now yeah. isn't it you, that's been a great car isn't it you really enjoyed that one it's an everyday yep uh it's been super reliable i've only managed to break it once hmm. Uh, in tremendous fashion, but it's been good. It hasn't killed me yet either, so that helps. Whereas it's the also, I mean, do. when you came to see me doing the video, I can't believe how much kick came out of that car. It's, it's no all, you can almost put it down as a family car. It's brilliant, it's isn't it? It's got a front boot that's yep. bigger than the back. Mm -hmm. Because it's mid-engined, you've got a lot of space. Don't have any back seats or anything, but I mean, I can pack a full kit and caboodle for doing videos, mm -hmm. podcasts. I do my weddings, everything just yep. goes in my light stands. Yeah, it's a, cool. it's a weird one. Damien, let's have another look at another watch. Mm. What do you fancy? I think it's got to be this little number right uh, here. Now this to me, if I'm not much mistaken, is the new Yachtmaster on the, is that white gold? Or it is, is yeah. So this is the white gold Yachtmaster. It's slightly bigger, isn't it, than the, than the rose gold? Yeah, 42 mil. Yeah. Uh, I'll let you see the two actually, you compare the two beside each other and you can actually see, you get that lovely difference of feeling between stainless steel and white gold. And on the Oyster Flex as well, which I actually love. I've actually yes. got, I've got the rose gold version of this, which mm -hmm. is probably why this isn't on my list of ones from Rolex. Mm -hmm. But but actually, when you hold it in your hand, it is it's stunning, isn't it? It's quite understated as well, I think, really which nice. is something that, that I see board. quite a lot of with watches. You know, I think that's where white gold fits in so well because it, you just unless you really know what it is, you just don't. so heavy, and that's and yeah, even on the rubber, lovely. yeah. And platinum markers as well, isn't it? Yeah, it bottom. has. But yeah. that's also got the new, I think it's a 3235 movement in it. And forgive right. me if I've got that wrong, but it's the new movement they put in, which is more accurate. It's got more resistance to magnetism. It's got a longer power reserve. Yeah. But that's just the technical detail. I just think it just the look of it, the feel, that density will be a bit like your, your Patek, that, that, that weight in the wrist. It's, it's really lovely, isn't it? And these are, well, they're, they're achieving massive overs just now. Are But that's, that's actually an unworn one we managed to pick up. So oh. I don't think that one will be around too long, but it's, it's quite special, isn't it? I think so if I didn't have the rose gold version, then I'd probably be tempted by that because mm -hmm. I do, I, I really like the, the Oyster Flex combination. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice one. So by means of regrets, Ricky, what car do you regret selling most? I don't regret any of them. No? Maybe maybe the mr2 because i get rid of that and the price of 90s japanese stuff has kind of mm -hmm. gone up and up mm -hmm. but it was in a state that it needed to go 
Right. So that was fine. Um, yeah, probably that one. But my biggest, we were talking about this in the car this morning, my biggest regret, I think, is selling my M3 CSL because that is just, I think that's one of the best cars that have been out there. Yeah, you I should regret that. I should, yes. I know, especially as the chap sold it again for about 20,000 more, but I think aesthetically, I mean, why do we buy these things? I mean, it's, it's just like the watches, isn't it? It's, it? it's what makes your heart beat. And uh, I know that's something that Scott, who kind of is the poor guy behind the video camera that helps me shoot all these videos, and we're trying to work on these videos and make them better. And I think that's what we're trying to do now. It's about that imagery of making your heart beat when you see something that makes that decision for these watches and these cars that we buy. Yeah, um, it's and palpable as well. I think when you see a watch that just clicks, you, yeah. you do get excited, and then and then the chase is on. And that's yeah. it. Then you must. And it doesn't it. matter whether you're buying your because you've got the Casio, haven't you? Got all kinds of cheap and wonderful stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, the Casio um, that was a bit of a, a surprise hit. Yes. Inexpensive, one of the cheapest G Shocks out, using new technology. It's got a carbon layer inside it, quad carbon, so it's a lot thinner, and it just looks great. Uh, it set the world on fire, and quite a lot of people have ended up in them. And it's about ninety nine pounds. Ninety nine bucks. Mm. No, I saw it on a bracelet the other day. Is that a new version, or someone been customising it? They they are quite up for customisation. They've right. got quick release straps now and you okay. can buy aftermarket straps from Casio or other people. So. Right, now you were talking about something earlier on with, with Rick when he was off camera about something, an Arnie, what was that? Yes, yes, well. He's, um, he's managed to get it there, so how do you get ahead of you? Well that's the I, thing. I can't imagine he's got a good relationship. So I anyway. have a Rolex. Ah, that's <laughs> what it is. Yeah, well, Seiko, Not for me Seiko uh, uh, they've done a brilliant job of reissuing a lot of their really iconic sort of dive watches and mm -hmm. things like that. And I've got them all. I bought every single one. I'm completely bought into it. And they, one of the ones that I really wanted, and I, and I did try to find the original, I think it's called the 558. And it was, it was worn by Arnold Schwarzenegger in a lot of his, well, all of his best action films. And it's an absolute icon. To find the originals is pretty difficult. There's one guy in Spain who's been trying to sell it for ages, and I'm not sure I've dealt with him. It didn't seem that, that sort of genuine. So I've never really bought the original, but like with the new ones, they, they reissued it. And, and it's quite hot property. And then I said to my Seiko guy, can you get me one of those? And he's, he's pretty reliable generally, but with this one, I think demand is, is seriously outstripping supply. So they were gonna get, I think, 250 of them in the UK, and I think they got 13. And, uh, and so I haven't got one yet. But, but it is on the list. I just, I just quite like it. Again, it's not, they're not super expensive, but you know, if, you, if you remember those films and if you like that sort of style, and I love that Seiko sort of chunky style. Well, that one's that actually one. in the movie poster for Predator. Yeah. When he's holding the gun, you can see it. Yeah. yeah that's really nice. So what do you think of the new Amiga, the new Bond watch that's just come out? Have you seen some pictures of that? I've seen it. I mean, I'm not usually a big fan of sort of faux mm. patina, sort of, you know, trying to make it look like that. But I think they've done a pretty good job. It looks, I mean, I quite like the look of it. Mm. I've, I've been mm. after, well, I've, I've dillied and dallied with things like that Spectre special edition for, for quite a while. And I've never really taken the plunge. But I mean, I think it looked, I look, looked pretty good. They certainly, they're, they're, they're raising their game, certainly in the pricing, because I think that watch is going to be around about £8,000 yeah. on the titanium bracelet. I yeah. mean, that's, you're into Rolex territory there, aren't you? So it's... I don't really know what you guys are talking about, because I was too busy looking at GLCs in Switzerland the other day when I saw that announced. Yeah, how did that trip go? Because yeah. you, you went off with... Oh. Um, Adrian from Bark and Jack, didn't you? And, yeah, uh, did you know? He Captain was, Company. He, well, if it wasn't for me, he wouldn't have gone. Right, it was his gig. Right. He got approached by JLC to go across for a factory tour. Just JLC, tour. we're talking Jäger Le Coutre, just long, long way Well, they don't like that. No, Do they not? not Jäger Le Coutre. It right? Jäger Le Coutre. Oh, very that good. That is how That's you pronounce it. We had an hour's intense training session on how to pronounce it when we arrived. So, so we don't need to ring their reception and ask them to pronounce it on You'll listen to the podcast. Mm, okay. we've, we've not done one of our prank calls in a while. <laughs> but uh, he got invited across and because we're now working with Bark and Jack in the 10 and 2 podcast as part of our sort of little boy and girls club called Hotix, he said, well, this guy can come and get more video footage. Went across. We were, uh, he told me about it. It was going to be Wednesday and Thursday this week we were going across and any emailed me on Monday with the itinerary and I'm reading through it, eight o'clock this, nine o'clock that, and I'm looking at the top and it says Tuesday. So I quickly messaged him and said, this is Tuesday, but you've said it's Wednesday and Thursday. Oh, 
right, I need to get home and pack. I've Classic. got the days mixed up. Wife's going to kill me. <laughs> so if it wasn't for me and inviting me along, he would have missed everything. Um, and even when we got there, he, he was trying to do an Instagram live just as it's the final call at the gate for the plane and then we're trying to drag him across. But no, it was a great trip. Very, very busy. Uh, we're only one night overnight, then straight to the factory. The trip there, it was minus 14 going up the mountains. Uh, to see the watchmakers, the enamelers, the gem setters, to speak to them and see how much attention. You see videos and you're like, yeah, that looks pretty cool. See, when you see the person using the finest tip brush to do enameling and they're trying to replicate a painting down to something that's maybe a centimetre, it's just incredible. And you can understand why some of these pieces are so expensive. Have they not just got an enormous magnifying glass? No, no. Oh. And, they, and they don't use any of those reducing Very machines. Hands. <laughs> Very tiny hands. Yes, well, uh, some, it's actually, there's only one person in the whole organisation that is capable enough of doing the guilloching uh, using these old machines. They tried to use newer technology, they were telling me, but they couldn't quite get the f look and the feel correct. So they went back to hundreds of year old technology, old machines that had been mothballed mm -hmm. just to reproduce that kind of finish. Have so you, I know with your relationship with Patek, have you been out to the Patek factory and done a tour with them? I haven't actually, no. It is, it's one of the things I would like to do. So right. I, I think I think when, you know, when I bought my eighth watch, I think then, yeah. then I get a free trip to the factory or something. I've heard, I've had some customers that have been on it and they said it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. So by means of the car guys, what's going on? What's, what, what, we got, what are we going to see over the next few months with what you and Jason are coming up to? Have you got some in incredible cars coming in, a change of things? Yeah, yeah we've got incredible cars. So I, I just li literally just got a Porsche uh, 718 Spider. I love what you've done to that. Yeah. Have you got the, 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 you're going to put some um, sort of brown seats in that, aren't you? To get yeah, real yeah I've, done, I've put the racing decals on, on the car to make it look like an old 50s RSK. Yeah. And I'm going to reupholster the seats in sort of brown aged leather. So that'll be done, and then we'll go and have some road trips and fun with that. We've got a uh, Ferrari, uh, the Pista Spiders coming probably March or April, and then the 812 Superfast is coming sort of probably April to June. So those are the two sort of big cars, but you never know. Sometimes stuff pops up. Sometimes we get another car in between. So occasionally, you know, just things jump into the garage when you least expect it. Um, so we might get some of that, but for us, we're sort of focusing on building up some of those relationships and also doing some more challenges. So we've done, we've done a couple of challenges, but we'd like to do some more. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit like mm -hmm. that, yeah. We, we really, that was part of the, the, the idea with the channel was that we'd always do some buying challenges um, or just something, you know, something a little bit more different or something that plays to that camaraderie of having two people doing it. So I think we'll do, we'll do a few more of those. Um, and we've also got, I think we've got a Back to the Future car coming in fairly soon as well. Um, so yeah, just just generally having a lot, a lot of fun around cars. Brilliant. And Scottish watches. Um, I know through the time that we've spent together, you've been doing events, of course, with manufacturers, with with Red Bar, mm -hmm. uh, with Mont Blanc, with Bremont. You've had some really good manufacturers getting behind you, so they're clearly loving what you and Rick are doing. And, and I think yeah. that, that's working. And I, I sincerely congratulate you both, both of you, for what you've Thank managed you to, to, to build up. What's the future looking like? Because you're now in your second video, of course, with us. What, mm -hmm. what, are, what are the plans that uh, viewers have got to look well, forward to? The first video that we put together, and we came up with the name The Talk Show, okay. T-O-C-K, that went down a storm. It was the first one we'd done, and we learned a lot from it. People wanted to see more of the watches, but the problem was we just ran out of time. You know what it was like. You, you plan something, it always takes a lot longer, so we're going to do more of those talk shows. Hopefully, when you come back up, we can get you and your sidekick and me and my sidekick yeah. and we can do some of your watches in more depth definitely but uh, who knows i mean next year we've got shh which is renamed watches and wonders we've got basel we've got different launches we're making inroads with different manufacturers we are in a similar way to you explained there with what you do we are a little bit like top gear for watches old top gear for maybe 10 years ago yeah. and that's the way we look at it we're a bit funny we don't just go through spec lists you know we have a joke we have a laugh about it uh, people seem to be quite receptive. Nobody is blackballed as yet, although we're trying very hard. Uh, <laughs> manufacturers are still speaking to us. We've never had anyone say, mm -hmm. apart from one man, well, apart from one person that said, "Don't put the podcast out or get sacked." <laughs> Everything else has been plain sailing, uh, and it's just it's gone from strength to strength. At the, the Omega event I was at last night, two people body checked me as I was walking to say, "I saw you on YouTube." They weren't frisking you as you're going. They weren't out. frisking me. No, no, that was somebody Check else. You're wearing that. the right strap on your watch. I was going to no, say that, that, that term body checked. I mean, I'm yeah. not sure what that meant. Exactly. Body yeah. check means a shoulder goes out and you walk into it. Yeah. Uh, so it was two of them, and then people like you'd mentioned earlier on off camera, people hear the voice 
So when me and Rick are doing things or speaking to people, suddenly you get a tap on the shoulder, are you such and such? So um, next year, who knows? I mean, we're, all, we're less than a year in, uh, just under 100 podcasts. So who knows what will happen next year? Maybe some more trips, maybe some more manufacturer stuff. And then working with yourself, obviously, mm. because I don't know if the cat's out of the bag yet. I think it might be but you're doing something with Red Bar sort of quite early on next year. Yeah, I think that's still being sort of built up, but I, I you know, I've, I've been, I mean, I come to the Red Bar events really just as me rather than Edinburgh Watch Company, and it's good fun. And yeah. um, I think there's a really good community that between yourself and Red Bar you've built up, it's really exciting. Um, it's it's not a snobby event, it's good yeah. fun. You know, guys rock up with a 10 pound watch or a you know 100,000 pound watch, and it's just there for all to see and enjoy. And I think that community you've built has been really, really good. And I just thought it'd be quite good fun, as I say, maybe February time, it's all a bit cold, and we're all at home watching TV and eating after Christmas chocolate. It's been nice to get out, and um, I'm talking to David, I think he's got some great ideas mm -hmm. on how we can try and bring the community together, so bringing not just watches, but maybe watch art and other things of interest as well, and we'll try and have events, so we'll let you know where that's going to come up, you yep. give you an excuse to come back up here and do it. Um, but yeah, I think there's lots going on, there's a real excitement mm -hmm. for that, so it's really, really good. Well, look, I think that um, pretty well brings us to the end of today's chat. Um, guys, it's been an absolute honor for you to join, us, join me uh, on, our, on our first audio. And to you in the corner, Rick, um, thank you for joining, for throwing paper objects at us. It's been fun <laughs> to have you in the background too, but it's been really good fun. Wish you massive success, you and Jason together, with what you're doing with the car, guys. We'll thank certainly you. be tuning in. For those that want to see the channel, where will they see it? On YouTube? YouTube is the, is the main area. Okay. So yeah, I mean, if you just put carguys.tv into YouTube, it'll find okay. it, uh, no problem. The Watch Guys TV, something to follow, to come. Yeah. Uh, I think you're kind of working that way, and you're kind of thinking how that's going to work. It's an amazing collection to go. Mm. Scottish Scottish Watch as well, you're kind of on all channels now, aren't you? What's the main one? Main one, well, there's so many. We've got the website, scottishwatches.co.uk, at scottishwatches. On Instagram, we've got the Scottish Watches YouTube channel, which we're starting to pick up pace with now. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be grabbing a couple of those pieces, so we don't you run off anywhere when we're done here. <laughs> uh, podcasting, that's the big thing. That's yep. what we're known for. Two podcasts a week, an hour each, perfect for the commute, perfect for the gym, or yep. if you're on the crapper. It's uh, on iTunes, Apple Podcasts. That's a long crap. Well, <laughs> some people like their, their crap breaks, you know what I mean? So and they're being paid everywhere. for it. Yeah. And they're getting paid for it, yeah. yeah. You know, listen to us on your boss's dime. Uh, so that's the best place there. Uh, we've also got a Facebook group, which yep. you're in. Uh, quite a lot of your customers are actually in there as well, bigging yep. you up, saying good things. Uh, that's on Facebook, just search Scottish Watches. We've got a page group, join the group, we'll let you in. You can chat with other people in the local area, plus worldwide, cool. about watches. And again, it's just a little bit tongue in cheek, keeping it a little bit fun and happy. Mm -hmm. So lots going on. Yeah. So to these, those of you watching, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. If you love your watches and you love your cars, then please go and tell your friends, get them onto these channels, share that, share the good work. Because I know that, I know for, I think for yourself and Jason that have been doing videos for a lot, it actually makes a real difference when people subscribe. You know people are watching because oh, yeah. you put a lot of effort into doing yeah. this. A lot of effort. And I know you're not working, that's easier sort of, sort of work just now. So it'd be really good for people to subscribe so they can see what you're doing. And also I think, giving feedback as well, because we only know we're doing things right when people tell us what we're doing right. So having said that, God knows what the comments gonna be like from today, but we can only improve if we hear what our viewers like. Yeah. So all the very best for that, all the very best. Thank you, Thank you for joining. Not long Thank to you. Now. Thank, Thank you, you Jonathan. It's been a pleasure, appreciate it. Goodbye from all of us, take care.